the Collective of Guides. A Message to Light Workers, February 24, 2017. Via Carolyn Oceana Ryan. Webpage, carolynoceanaryan.com. The latest guidance from the Galactics, Earth Elementals, Ascended Masters, Fairy Elders, Angels, and Archangels known as the Collective. Greetings, friends and fellow light beings. We are pleased to have this opportunity to speak with you again today. Our writer has been speaking with us about the very great, very perplexing issue of forgiveness and release of judgment. This issue has probably never been of such importance to light workers, or to humankind, as it has lately become. The divisive nature of the political environment in many countries at present show several things. For one, it reveals one of the greatest ploys of the dark hats, to divide and conquer. To set a people against themselves, by engendering the trust and support of one group, and the distrust and resentment of another. And so you have generally, two camps, regardless of how many political parties a country may possess. And these two camps are roughly divided between those who believe that obedience to the power structure, what is called conservatism, is paramount at all times, and those who believe that questioning that power structure and constantly holding them to account, what is called liberalism, is the paramount objective. And we would say, that one wanders into difficult territory, when it is people whom one objects to, rather than ideas, mistaking a person's beliefs for that person. For each person is far, far more than their social training, their mental concepts, and even that which they consciously hold in their heart as defining who they are. This is perhaps, at most, 2 or 3 percent of what anyone is. So that to label someone from their political beliefs, a role they willingly took on before incarnating, for what they would learn from it, is to hold them inside a very small category indeed. We understand your concerns at present. There are great issues to be faced and dealt with, on your way to ascending into a new earth. And we would, as always, encourage you to envision within your own heart, and encourage others to do the same, that beautiful new earth in which winning is never emphasized over freedom of choice. Where there are no losers or unacceptable people, but only the empowerment of the heart-mind. Where individuals express their identity and their life path and life purpose freely, without judgment from others. And we would say, that we understand your consternation, looking out upon a world in which it seems that one half of the people it does not matter which half you are looking at have been deluded, have lost their senses, have forgotten what is important, and are following wrong-headed notions. It is understandable that in your love and compassion for humankind, for the earth and all living upon her, that you would want things to go as you believe would be best for all. That concern and heartfelt interest is a beautiful and fine impulse, and must never be lost. And yet, in your preferences and strong statements regarding how things should go, in your labeled views and objections to the status quo, you are unconsciously contributing to the divide. Now, are we saying that when something happens that you feel should not happen, that you should allow that which you believe is an injustice, and never speak up? We would say, that you have been given a voice and a heart, and have come here to use them both, and you are using them, that is as it should be. We only speak to that aspect of your heart-mind that is already planning and beginning to live a fifth-dimensional life, is already, in beautiful quiet moments of meditation or connection to the earth, and moments of heart connection to others, experiencing such. And we say to that heart-mind, what do you envision here? What do you wish to build? Have you decided how you will build it? If you wish for LGBT youth to feel loved and accepted, have you created places in your community where they may come for counseling, for participation in music, art, and theater, 
or for group support. If you wish for women or non-whites to be fully respected, are you creating support groups for women wishing to have the courage to begin their own organizations? Or to receive counseling? Or to engage in positive social action that shores up the freedoms that so many have fought and died for? If you are concerned for the plight of refugees, have you looked for ways to not only bring them to your shores, but to alleviate the situation in their own countries? Are you envisioning peace in their countries? The push against does not create what is desired. It in fact creates only more of that which is not desired. You have heard that when one pushes with 10 pounds of pressure against a wall, the wall, in standing and resisting, pushes back with 10 pounds of pressure. And so, 20 pounds of pressure is the result, rather than none. This is a plain way to say that what you wish to build does not come from the ego mind, from that aspect of you which judges good or bad. That which you wish to create can only come from the high heart, and the visions you hold in your high hearts. We have seen them, and they are glorious. We see your vision of fairness, of equality of love and respect for all. The beauty of your outcry against injustice, whatever you feel that injustice to be, is the love, concern, and compassion that it is built upon, and that is a tremendous form of the awakening occurring now across your planet. We see your belief in the human endeavor toward ascension, in ways barely dreamt of in literal terms, yet felt by you at every moment. We see you in your etheric state, as you join us nightly in the higher realms, working to introduce higher vibrational realities into human consciousness. For you can do much that we cannot, dear ones. You can do more than we can in your human state, to transform your world, and you are as powerful as we are, if you would realize as much. And so while the sometimes angry activism you see in a number of countries at present is a beautiful sign of awakening and higher consciousness, we would say, do not stop there. Do not feel that that is the extent of your work, and do not stay in that place of anger for very long, so long that you begin to define yourself by it. For your visions and your positive statements, beliefs, expectations, and other steps are what are building the new earth. For that, you do not have to put up a fight. It is the peace within your hearts, the assurance and confidence that what you are creating now cannot be taken from you, that is withstanding all outer pressure, and outliving all plans and ploys to create its opposite. The dark hats have no plan for dealing with an ascended people. A world of people dedicated to grasping the reality of their innate power to first envision a new world out of a higher love for all, and then to actively create such. The lost ones fool themselves into thinking they have a ready response to the forms of empowerment now appearing amongst the human race, but they do not. That is because the higher energies reaching Earth now, sent not only from your galactic families and the angelic realms, but from other planets and stars and configurations in your solar system, and the great central sun himself, are of a level that these dark ones cannot bear to experience, let alone eradicate. And so we would say, if you are able to see that judgment and lack of forgiveness toward another is the way of your smaller, third dimensional self, and not your new and far greater self, that that is a great help toward moving beyond the polarity of the old way of doing things. A great move out of the ruts of the ego mind, which you are far larger than, even in your supposedly weakest moments. You are indeed larger than any subject, conundrum, or experience you may be grappling with at present. So much greater, that we cannot call these problems, for in truth, when you are fully realizing your own inner power to create worlds, you have no problems. Only momentary questions, or challenges to be moved through, fully and calmly. There is no greater law than the law of love, which parallels and conjoins with the law of one, and you are made from such. And in your realization of your interconnection with all that is, dear ones, 
there is your freedom from the very great prison of resentment, judgment, and the futility of belief in separation. Take a moment and look at an image of someone who appears to be quite different from you, expressing something you could never bring yourself to believe. Say to them, I am you, and you are me. We are momentarily playing different trolls, you and I. And yet, we are one, and I celebrate this. And I thank you for the awakening you have spurred on in me, and the beauty of your path. We have said many times, that you are never alone. Set down the shield and the sword, even that which you were born into this world with, many of you, long enough to feel the shifting of powerful winds, auguring the arrival of a new earth, born first within you, then all around you. And know that you could not take even one step upon this path without meeting the full compassion, joy, and belief in you that all of us hold at every moment. We are asking that, as you extend that compassion, even your thanks, to those who appear to be on the other side of the fence, that you extend it to yourself as well. And so this is your earth journey, one of learning to love even that which you came here to experience as unlovable. The great conundrum, yet you hold the key in your own hands, dear ones. And we are with you, yes, more than you can know. Namaste, dear ones. For you are on the path to mastery.